Do you have merchandise that you buy and sell, but you do not need to track the quantity of? In that case, you should use non-inventory parts. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. Non-inventory parts are items that you both purchase and sell just like regular inventory. They're items that you do not need to track the quantity of. You can track the purchase cost in an expense type of account when you buy the items, and you can track the sales income in an income type of account when you sell them. When you set them up on the list of products and services, you must choose the expense account for the purchase costs and the income account for the sales price. So, some examples of non-inventory parts would be contractors who use job supplies, even if they buy them and mark them up, they don't really count the supplies and keep an inventory, like the bricks they would use to repair a wall, or the wooden beams that they use to build a wall, and so on. What about a painter? A painter would not keep track of how many cans of paint they have and how many cans they specifically sold. They would simply buy it and then use it and then charge their customer, but they would not keep in their QuickBooks records the quantity purchased, sold, and that which remains. In our example, we will use fruit crates that hold the fruit that is sold to a customer. Because sometimes when companies sell, they give a little markup for the container that they sell it in, but they don't really keep track of how many they buy and how many they sell of that container, in this case crates. So, non-inventory parts are also called two-sided items. And they're called two-sided items because they have a purchase cost and a sales price that you have to set up when you set up the item. The purchase cost is what will automatically appear when you write a check to buy the items, when you record an expense type of transaction to buy the items, or you enter a vendor's bill when you buy the non-inventory part. The sales price will automatically show up on the invoice that you record when you sell the item, or the sales receipt when you sell the item will have the sales price if the customer pays immediately. Now our example of a non-inventory part will be fruit crates, the containers that we actually give when we sell the fruit. So we have to buy them and we have to charge a little markup to our customers for the crates but we don't actually count them and keep track of the quantity. So the fruit crates purchase cost when we write a check and we buy them will go into an expense type of account but when we sell the fruit crates the income will go into an income of a uh, type of account like sales so let's add those two accounts to the chart of accounts as part of the setup for buying and selling the non-inventory part Go down to Accounting and click Chart of Accounts. Now this is the first time in this new account that we're looking at the chart of accounts so you get this little picture and you click See Your Chart of Accounts. Notice QuickBooks Online already comes with a set of accounts in the chart of accounts and it is assumed that these are common accounts that we would use with any company and now we will add the specific accounts that we need so in the top right we click new now the account type is expense and the detail type really doesn't matter so let's just choose 
uh, let's just choose other business expense. Now, we know the name of it is fruit crate purchases. Cap locks. And then we can click save and close, but we really should click save and new because the next account will be an income type of account and the category for that could either be sales of product or service fee it doesn't really matter but we'll choose sales of product and we'll call it fruit crate sales and now we have an account to hold the income and the account to hold the purchase cost when we buy let's click save and new because we also need accounts receivable accounts payable and cash in order to pay to or from any of the things that we buy and sell in the course so let's leave the name account receivable and detail type account receivable and click save and new we should do the same thing for accounts payable and leave the detail type account payable and click save and new we also should add a bank type of account and maybe checking is the most common for our operating account when we buy and sell and we'll give it the name because ultimately the cash will come in for selling and out for buying even if it goes to receivables and payables first now we can click save and close and you can look carefully at your chart of accounts and you can see cash account receivable accounts payable you go down to the income section you can see you have an income account for fruit crate sales and go to the expense section and you can see you have fruit crate purchases right here as an expense now let's put this item on the items list of products and services in QuickBooks Online. We will put $5 each for the purchase cost and we will put $20 each for the sales price. So to add something to the list of products and services we go to the top right and we click the cog wheel. Then we go across to lists and click products and services. Now, QuickBooks already comes with one uh, product, and, or, or really two services, but we won't use the ones that QuickBooks Online comes with. We'll make our own, and we'll click New. And this is a non-inventory part, and the name of it is Fruit Crates. I like to put capital. Now, the income account associated with fruit crates is up here, fruit crate sales, the one we put on the list a moment ago. Now, the sales price is $20 each. Now, in order to make this a two-sided item, we have to click this box. I purchased this product or service from a vendor. Now, when we scroll down, you can see that you have the opportunity to put the expense account, in this case, fruit crate purchases, the one we just made, and what we normally buy each one for. Okay, You don't need preferred vendor. You can leave that blank. Now we click Save and Close, and we have our fruit crates on the list of products and services so we can record the purchase and we can record the sale now here's the example purchase let's imagine on January 1 of 2020 we purchased a hundred crates from Staples with check number one now before we do that let's click reports and go to the trial balance you can see right now we have everything zero in the trial balance 
because we have not yet recorded any transactions in this new account. And now we will do the example purchase. Let's imagine on January 1 of 2020 we purchased 100 crates from Staples with check number 1. Now we know that we're purchasing 100 and we remember the purchase cost is $5 each. So in America 100 times 5 equals 500 and that should be the amount of check number 1. But then the question is what will show up on the trial balance at the moment we record this check? Well, fruit crate purchases which was the expense account that keeps track of the total that we paid when we bought the fruit crates that will show up on the trial balance for the five hundred dollars and at the same moment cash and bank will show a negative five hundred because if our trial balance is starting with zero for everything it means QuickBooks Online thinks we have zero dollars in cash and Chase Bank so if we write a five hundred dollar check it will show up as negative and I put a negative number but I really did not have to because people who know a little bit about accounting know that if cash the balance of cash is on the credit side on the right side it's implied that it's negative but anyway it will look very similar to this after we record our first check purchasing the non inventory part from the top left click new and go over to vendors and click check now the payee is the vendor staples the date is January 1 of 2020 now you have to look carefully at the bottom section of the check you can close out the category details and click the triangle for item details and then click under the word product and service to get the items list right now we only have one item on the items list fruit crates and notice because this is a check QuickBooks put the rate at five dollars each because that's the rate that we purchase the crates at and we set that up on the items list the quantity is 100 and QuickBooks will calculate the quantity times the rate to tell you the amount of the check so cash will become negative for $500 and we will have $500 in the expense for purchasing the fruit crates click save and close and if we go click to reports tri trial balance you can see that the numbers are exactly as what we expected this expense fruit crate purchases showed up as five hundred dollars and cash and bank is showing a negative five hundred because it is on the credit side but don't worry it won't be too negative for long because now I will show you the example sale let's imagine on January 2nd of 2020 we sold 10 crates to Allen who deposited the money from the sale directly into our bank account now we know that we're selling 10 and we know we sell them for twenty dollars each so in America 10 times 20 equals 200 so if that's the amount of the sale it means the income account fruit crate sales will show up for the first time as 200 and cash and bank will be 200 less negative and will only owe the bank 300 because Alan was kind enough to deposit 200 into our account let's take a look at how to record it since we got paid immediately we will make a sales receipt in the top left click new and in the column of customers click sale receipt now the date is January 2nd the customer is Alan by the way your sale receipt will say number one I was just playing around you could fix it 
you do not have to agree with the default number that QuickBooks gives you. You can type in your own on the right here, but I'm just going to fix it. Okay, so we have sale receipt number 1001. The customer is Alan, and the date is January 2nd. Now we will choose which product or service. When we click this arrow, this is our items list. And this is the item we set up, and we click Fruit Crates. And the quantity that we're selling is 10. So QuickBooks remembers when we set up the item list that the rate for each one, the sales rate, was $20 each. And that's why Alan deposited this money directly into our Cash and Chase Bank for this sale receipt. Now when we click Save and Close, the numbers are exactly as what we expected. Fruit Crate sales showed up for the first time as 300 and because Alan put 200 in our bank, the balance of the bank is less negative. It's still on the credit side, which means it's a negative bank balance, but it's 200 less negative. Now the most important report to look at is right here. Reports, profit and loss. And you can see we have $200 in income from the sales and we have $500 for the expense that we paid to buy them. So we currently have a loss of $300. And that brings us to our next major point. The profit and loss report will not show the real profit from buying and selling non-inventory parts. That's because the expense account, in this case crate purchases, includes all the crates that we purchased, including the ones that we still have. This is because non-inventory parts do not consider quantity. And that's why we really need to activate inventory so that only the quantity sold will be deducted to find the profit. You see, right now we have the wrong profit. We have minus 300, and that's wrong. But we know that the correct profit is positive 150. Wait a minute. Why is the correct profit a positive 150? because we know we got $200 for selling 10 of them, but we also know that we paid $50 for each of the 10, well, for, for the 10 crates that went out, we paid 50 and we got 200. So that's how we know the real profit is 150. That means there's literally a $450 difference between the wrong profit and the correct profit. How do you account for that? Well, if you've been following the story, you know that we still have 90 crates with us that we have not yet sold. The computer doesn't know that because we did not activate inventory and count the quantity. So if you consider the 90 that we still have times the $5 that we paid for each of those, that means we still have $450 as, uh, a value that the computer doesn't know that we still have. And that explains why there's a $450 difference between what the computer says we have as profit and what we really have as profit. So that's why you must activate inventory and consider quantity. Now stick around because the video that follows this one, we will show you how to activate inventory.